Hey everybody, happy Thanksgiving. I'm using a new mic tonight, so hopefully you guys can hear me and the audio is gonna stay synced, but if I you can't hear me, please let me know before we start this thing, and hopefully I'm just not saying nothing right now. But pretty sure I'm saying something based on the mic line, so I think we're okay here, but like I said, let me know. So I have a lot of questions so far just based on the announcement video I did a couple days ago, and we are just going to start barreling off the questions. Hello to everybody. Again, happy Thanksgiving. Please stay safe during this holiday season. Um, let's get right into this, guys. I haven't been out in a while. The last, uh, last major trip I did, well, I can't really say that. The last trip I did was in the Dolly Sods. It wasn't filmed, but I was determined to actually see that place in the fall with all the, uh, the, the fall colors, so I was able to see that. Lion's Head was freaking amazing. Um, but anyway, let's get to these questions. I want to thank everybody for your support. Hello, everybody. Hello. Let's see. First question. And let me know if I miss anybody. Sometimes this thing likes to jump around here. So, Hamster King asks, for the Laurel Highlands Trail, do I suggest going Nobo or Southbound? Um, personally, I like to start in Johnstown and then head to Ohio Pile. And the reason for that, I think the mileage works out a little better. You kind of get your, your long day the second day based on my four day planning trips. But also at the end, you're rewarded with all the views in Ohio Pile, which is really, really nice because it kind of gives you that reward. Plus at the Ohio Pile parking lot, there's this great bar with great food and great beer. I want to say it's the Wilderness Voyages Lodge. I can't remember off the top of my head, but we did it on the, the group Laurel Highlands hike. So I definitely recommend going from Johnstown to Ohio Pile. Okay, Brian Ogden. Question about left to right hanging in a hammock. Um, so in general, the left or the right hang means based on where your head is. So if you're a left lay, your head is going to be at the left side of the bug net, so closer to the bug net. If you're a right lay, and correct me if I'm wrong, I could be saying this completely wrong, it's making sense in my head, but if you're a right lay, it's the complete opposite. So the war bonnet blackbird, which you've seen me lay in probably a dozen times, that's a left lay. So hope that helps. Uh, dream hammock is one of those hammocks that can make it either way. I think same with the chameleon, you can lay either way. All right, Bradley just went on the John P. Sailor Trail. Guess it was swampy. Yeah, that bridge was uh, something else, huh? <laughs> oh, that sucks that you had to walk through a swamp. When me and Gary went a couple years ago, it was dry as a bone almost. Anyway, checking in from Chestertown. Awesome. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Stowe. Brian Ogden did 11 Peaks in Santa Barbara. Awesome, awesome. Hello from Canada. Nice to see some Canadian fans in here. That's really cool. Uh, Hamster King, anyone ever attempt Florida hiking trails, want to do it, but would like to get some insight. Okay, so hopefully somebody can help him out. I haven't done any trails in Florida, though. There is this trail that Franke and uh, Z-Pax did with uh, Redbeard, Will Wood. And it was the Oceans to Sea or the, the River to Sea or something. It was just basically walking through a swamp. I don't know why that interests me. I just think it would be very challenging and it's something that I would really want to do. Okay, Lee asked, what distance between trees do I prefer for a perfect hang? Uh, well, for the most part, I'll take what I can get, but usually I'll stand on one end of the tree that I'm going to use, and then I'll walk 15 steps. So foot to foot, 15 steps. That's what I usually go by. I don't really know how to measure that any other way, but that seems to be what works for me. Yeah, Outdoor Gear Review, I'm definitely a fan of his. Um, he had that, uh, he had that Halloween hike where he recorded some crazy EVPs. Now I'm a big skeptic in those things, but some of those, uh, sessions that he did with, on the, uh, on that trail was pretty crazy. Thomas Hudgens says, my wife and I are thinking about starting our own channel. Any advice? I think the hardest part about starting a channel is actually remembering to film. I think a lot of people just, you know, hold the camera out and just kind of walk the trail. I think, you know, for me, for me personally, I like to hear what's going on in your head. Are you worried about something? You know, did something happen? You know, introduce yourself. We want to see your personality a little bit. 
You know, we want to know what you're thinking. You know, tell a story. Don't just be like, oh, here's the trail and kind of film it. We want to make it like a story. Make it like a RPG video game. You need to go to the end of the trail. That's your goal. And see here, I just jumped up. So let's go up here. Uh, let's see. Bradley B. Frozen. Any places on winter hang meetups? Um, it may happen. I got a couple hangs that I'm going to. One's going to be up in, uh, what the heck is that? Morrison Trail up in Allegheny National Forest. That's a, a hammock forums meetup. There's probably be some others, but I'm personally not planning anything, but I'd like to. If there's enough interest, I would definitely do somewhere close to my house, Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh, maybe Ohio would be a good option. But yeah, I would, I'm definitely going to be, I mentioned this in the announcement video, but I definitely want to not have a big um, break in my videos. I know there's the past couple years now, it's like, okay, you see me in September and then you see me again in like February and March. And I don't want to do that. I actually want to keep going. I, right now I got a ton of work projects that need to get done, but I have a lot of time off in December. So I think that's when my next trip's going to be. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be, but I know somewhere, sometime, in December, it's going to happen. All right, Avarin 11. It's cold in here. My voice sounds really shaky, but it's just cold in here. I don't know what's going on. I got a new uh, Nest thermostat, and uh, it's, it's messing with me. It's trying to learn my schedule right now, but it keeps making my house all weird. Uh, okay, Avarin 11. I'm going to be hiking the Black Forest Trail. Awesome. In a few weeks, and would like to go counterclockwise for three or four day hikes. Three or four day hike. Any advice on clockwise versus counterclockwise? Anything else I should know? Four days seems like a good plan for that trail. I went, I'm trying to remember now, I went clockwise. There's beautiful campsites everywhere along that trail. Plenty of water, plenty of streams. There's some backwoods road walking, which is actually very scenic. And it's a nice trail. You won't have to worry about rattlesnakes, which was my big concern when I hiked that trail. Just Make sure you're leaving enough time for yourself to complete that trail. I know I had a hard time with it. You know, my base weight wasn't as low back then as it was, you know, now. But I, I did struggle with the southern side of that and one uphill on the northern side of that. So just be careful with that. But it's a beautiful trail. I actually really want to do that again at some point here. All right. Fishing with Phil. Hey, guys, I keep getting a burning hurtful spot under my middle toe on the bottom of my left foot. Any ideas how to fix it? Only hurts after so many miles. Burning hurtful spot under your middle toe. Um, check your insole. Maybe you have a burr in your insole or something's wrong. Maybe uh, try swapping them out if you're still using your stock insoles. I'm not sure what you know, you're using if you're using trail runners or boots. You know, comment below and we'll get back to that question. All right, it looks like uh, audio is good. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, B, I'm just going to call you B because I don't want to screw, screw up your name. Uh, what hiking trails in PA State Forest is, is your choice where to camp? When, when hiking trails? Um, some good PA State Forest trails, a Morrison, um, any, pretty much any trail in Allegheny National Forest is going to be a blast. I really like the Laurel Highlands Trail. Uh, there's plenty of pre-established campsites where they have chopped wood for you. Uh, the John P. Saylor Trail, which someone else mentioned before, it was really muddy. I really like the trail. It wasn't muddy when I went. But, you know, there's Raccoon Creek, Oil Creek. There's a ton of trails. Just check out my videos. All those spots are, are really, really nice to camp in. All right. Carlson Adventures. Frozen, I'm looking to getting the Dutch Halfwit Hammock. Any opinions on this? You know, I've been uh, looking at that, and Uptrail has a really good opinion on that. He, I believe, and I don't want to put words in his, mouth, in his mouth, but I believe he said that he doesn't see a point to that because in the winter, you're not going to need a net, a bug net. So there goes that option for the winter. And in the summer, he doesn't feel like he trusts the bugs not to come in under that net. He feels it's insufficient, I, I think is the word he used. I could be wrong. It could have been someone else, but I believe Uptrail71 has said this, and he has since switched to, I think he's in a dream hammock now. So, and that's a full length 
bug net. I don't want to deter you from trying it. I mean, the half foot is very, very light. I would just rather have the full bug net. For the extra couple ounces it's going to be to add just the rest of that bug net, I don't think it's personally worth it, but that's just my opinion. Maybe someone else in the chat can chime in here. Alex River. Man, I'm jealous of you already, man. Hey, I'm going to hike the AT after high school. Any tips? Get your conditioning in on your feet. Um, walk around on your bare feet as much as you can. Build up them calluses. Get those feet ready. Make sure you're, you have your gear down. I think the biggest thing that from the AT through hikers I've watched, uh, Bigfoot, Early Riser, uh, Homemade Wanderlust, all those guys and girl, they said the most expensive part about that trail is figuring out what gear you need. You don't want to figure out that you're not, you don't really have the right gear a quarter of the way through and then have to buy everything again. So make sure your gear is set before you leave on that trail. And like I said, I'm completely jealous of you. I am personally hoping to do that trail in 2019. Really hoping. I'm really just cross my fingers and hoping I can save enough money and everything will go as planned. But good luck on that. I would love to watch your vlog if you're going to do that. I'd love to hear how you're doing with it. Falls City Pub. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's a great place on the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail in Ohio pile to go to the Falls City Pub. We had some really, really good burger there. Uh, Bob A. Audible book recommendations. I'll tell you my three favorite ones. Uh, the Martian. Ready Player One, my absolute favorite. Armada. And then I'm listening to this new one. I'm still listening to it. I haven't found time to finish it all, but it's called Fear of the Sky. So hopefully that'll get you started. I love all, all those books, though. All right, Bob S., Oh, see, I hate when it jumps around. Jeez. Uh, if I had to do it over again, would you go Arc Hall or Arc Blast? I'm a weekend warrior and don't see myself wearing through an Arc Blast quickly. However, I may carry 35 pounds in winter with a 10-pound summer base weight. Hmm. Um, I was just thinking about this the other day because uh, they did... z -Pack sent me a, a, a Nero to try out. I really, really like it. However... I think I'd still go with the Arc Hall for the extra weight capacity. I definitely needed it on my Superior Hike and Trail when we were carrying three or four, you know, mostly four days of food. And it especially comes in handy when you're carrying, you know, an extra two liters of water, which I found myself to carry on a couple of trips recently. So the Arc Hall is great. I haven't heard too many complaints about the Arc Blast. Uh, my buddy Meerkat did say he got some small puncture holes at the bottom, just, you know, from setting the pack down at normal wear and tear, that I personally haven't seen with beating up the Arc Hall over 300 and probably 400 miles at this point. So I think I'd still go Arc Hall at this point, but the Arc Blast is definitely a great option if you're going to take care of it, which it sounds like you will be. Um, but still, 35 pounds in the winter, you can kill that off of, you know, Arc Hall for both winter and summer. And it's only three ounce difference, just keep that in mind. All right, Jay Gill, I'm going to section hike the AT in New Jersey. Do you think it's still necessary to hang a food bag or all the bears hibernating by now? Um, I always hang my food bag. It's not just bears you want to look for. You're actually worried about the rodents that might still be out, you know, squirrels, the mice, the rats. I don't know their hibernation schedule or even if they hibernate at all, but I would feel more comfortable just throwing it up in a tree. Now in the winter, I'm not too overly cautious about hanging at the right height, being way well away from the tree or anything like that. But, you know, it, it takes, what, a minute, two minutes to hang that food bag? So I would just hang it. So. All right, now that we answered some of these questions, I do want to go over some of the questions from the QA announcements, the people that couldn't make it. Uh, let's just start with Cody. I'll read a couple of these off, and then we'll switch back to the live feed. I know it's kind of the holiday season right now, so I know some people are with their families already. So anyway, a question from Cody from the comments section of the last video. Hey, Jason, which shelter site is the best one at Oil Creek, Cal Run, or Wolf Kill? Cody, personally, I like Wolf Kill. It seems to be a bigger shelter site, especially if you're saying in the shelters, but the tent site is more open and there's actually a decent amount of trees to hang a hammock from. 
At Cow Run, there's literally one set of trees to hang a hammock from, and the rest is pretty overgrown, in my opinion, unless you're hanging near the actual shelters, you know, the wooden shelters. Austin, he cracked me up with this comment. He goes, with all the cottage vendor sales going on, I find myself struggling with self-control and wanting to buy a little bit of everything. Do I struggle with the same thing? And how do I pr prioritize which investments to make now versus maybe waiting a year and using your current gear a little longer? So this is something that I really struggle with, especially having a YouTube channel. It's no secret that the ad money that comes to me, I pretty much put all back into the channel and I find myself just buying stuff just to buy it and try it out and then give my review on it. Some things that I think that you guys might want to take a look at, et cetera, et cetera. However, recently the YouTube money is starting to go to the AT through hike fund, which I'm going to need about, I'm going to be safe and probably try to save up $15,000. Now that's obviously not all going to come from YouTube. It would take me years to make that much on, on YouTube, but all the cottage vendor sales, you have to, and see, I, I would, I would definitely just, if I, if I had a choice, if I had unlimited supply money, I would just buy everything and try it out. But what's funny is a couple years ago, my friend who was also getting into backpacking made an Excel sheet and made a calculation, basically, um, how much weight your current gear is, how much weight you're saving and how much money to get that saving. So it was like the cost per gram saved. That's what I found out to be the most helpful. So if you want to calculate that formula, you know, just, you know, subtract and then divide the cost per grams and whatever is going to be your highest or lowest cost per gram, that's what you should prioritize and upgrade first. Hopefully that helped Austin. Nicholas, just wondering if you ever thought about doing a video of the standing stone trail. I have not, I haven't even heard of the Standing Stone Trail, but I will check it out. I have a giant growing list of things that I want to do, so I will add it to the list. Uh, Trail Cat, he was asking for winter backpacking noob places and gear necessities for winter. And like I said, I personally am a big, huge noob when it comes to winter backpacking. You know, I feel like I'm really comfortable in three season weather, but when that winter hits 19 degrees and lower, I'm a complete noob. I, I'm, I just, I just don't know what I'm doing yet. And you know, it starts with your clothing. So I say the biggest necessity with winter gear that you're not already going to be bringing from your three season gear is your clothing. As far as noob places, the biggest noob place, if you're around me, Raccoon Creek State Park, there's literally a parking lot right next to both areas and it's an easy walk out. We're talking less than the, the, uh, the first site is like a quarter mile and the second site is a three mile walk out to the nearest parking lot. So very, very easy. And that's where I'm probably going to do a lot of my testing this year before I go on a real trip. Michael asks, how do you keep in shape during the winter months when I can't be out on the trail as much? Um, I've said this and I've mentioned this in a couple videos now, but I'm a big fan of this beach body program called Insanity. It's the same people that make P90X and Body Beast and all that other crap. But Insanity for me, it offers really good stretches. IT band level stretches basically was what it comes down to for me. But it's, it's high impact training. And for me, it just keeps my knees in order. It keeps you know, my, my cardiovascular health up. And it's just a very, very good thing. I mean, I really have no problems once I get out in the winter. I mean, I'm always working out at home. I try to work out four days a week. So check out that program. And if you can't afford that program, there's other places that that can be downloaded from. Just saying. Blake Miller, can you talk about snakes? Blake, snakes are one of those things that you're rarely going to run into, but when you do, it's pretty darn scary. I, I consider a snake encounter just as scary as an up close and personal bear encounter. So, um, garter snakes you'll see all the time. Obviously they're no threat, but when it comes to rattlesnakes and copperheads, you know, things that can actually hurt you, you just got to pay attention to where you're going, you know, research how to deal with snakes. You know, I myself am not an expert. I had to ask for help on one of my Smokies trips cause I had a bad encounter where it actually snapped at me and I handled it wrong. And now I know exactly what to do. You can get a stick, you can throw rocks near it to 
entice it to move, but you'll learn to deal with them. Just stay away from them, give them plenty of space, and you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's switch back to the live feed. Uh, Joe Torres, planning any plan on planning on any trips up in the White Mountains? Yes, it was supposed to happen this year, but due to weather, I ended up going to the Smokies, which is the trip I was just talking about. We are going to do the Pemi Loop. Uh, Syntax and several hundred other people have a video about that, but we are going to do that next year. That's 100%. And we're going to do the Linville Gorge, which is also 100%. It's a trip that I've been putting off for years now. And I have the map, and I cannot wait to go to those two places. Okay, over the hills. Hello from Shreveport, LA. Packing my pack as we speak for a weekend trip to Eagle Rock Loop in Arkansas. Um, it's Uchida, Uchida Mountains, I think. That's awesome. You have a great time. All things outdoors, just an update from the hike for, oh yeah, for hike for hunger in the LHH three day trip in August. From all the funds raised, we fed 80 families, totaling 300 people on Monday. Thank you so much for the tips and videos. My pleasure, all things outdoors. I wish I could have joined you on that, man. But congratulations, thanks for doing that. That really means a lot to the hiking community and to all the people involved. Yes, I know that there's this Penguins game scheduled. It's, uh, it's right over here on the other screen. I'm just keeping my eye on it. So if you see me looking away, I'm not ignoring. It means we probably scored. So, or lost as uh, we've been recently doing. Uh, Thomas Hudgens, thank you for the information. We're thinking about naming the channel 50 Plus Hikers. Again, thank you. You are totally welcome. Great vids. Keep up the work. Oh, yeah, I got to get to that. Um, so Rotor Medic, Rotor Medic Vance, happy Thanksgiving first of all. Uh, the stretching video will be out next week. I was trying to get it out this week. YouTube's actually really ticking a lot of people off. What they're doing is they're still forcing everybody to watch ads, but they're not monetizing the videos. So I have to put out videos four days in advance because everything is says it's inappropriate for whatever reason i guess i'm just an asshole i don't know why but we got gaming channels getting hit by it we got backpacking channels we got informational like educational videos getting hit by it and it all says you know showing ads but we're not going to give you any money for it so like i said i have to do videos four days in advance or five days in advance and then they have to be reviewed which takes two or three days so it's coming I have it filmed. It's just in the process of editing. I just didn't have time this week to do it. Uh, Robert asks, as an outdoor writer and now YouTube channel host, Adventures Found. Keep that in mind, guys. I just found. I just added a small drone to my video gear. What's your opinion of the occasional use of a drone on the trail? I think it adds a lot of depth to the video. I personally want to have my eye on the Mavic Pro. Um, which is what a lot of YouTubers are using. I mean, Homemade Wanderlust has it, uh, Syntax has it, I believe, and a couple other people that I regularly watch have it. So I think it, it is a great tool if you want to carry that extra two pounds around. However, some national parks have outlawed the drones, you know, com just completely outlawed them. So you have to be careful where you bring it. But for the most part, I don't have a problem with it as long as you're not, you know, bugging people. You know, if you're sharing a camp with, you know, 15 people, I wouldn't disturb them by flying a drone. You know, if it's just you, by all means, fly that thing, get some footage, and, you know, show us the video of it. But try not to bother people with it is the big thing. You don't want to ruin... It's like people listening to their, their Bluetooth speaker rolling down the hiking trail. I mean, it sounds cool to you, but... Sometimes I just want to veg out and not hear anything, and I definitely don't want to hear your horrible music kind of thing. So, hope that helps. Uh, Abner Cakes. Hey, dude. Happy early Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I can't recall, but do you use a mic for any of your recordings outside of what's on your camera? So, I'm using the... I'm using a... Hopefully, this doesn't script the audio. I'm using an H1, a Zoom H1 now that I just recently bought and an external Sony mic for the reviews. For this, I, this setup, I don't really want to 
string a mic up to my shirt while I'm backpacking. I'd rather just hold the camera up. It's actually this camera right here. So I just hold the camera up and this mic actually picks up things pretty good while I'm out there. Not so good inside because it literally picks up my air conditioner, or my heater, whatever I have going on, my water tank. It picks up all that stuff. So I did upgrade the mic for review videos or any videos I shoot around my house. But for 99% of the trips, I'm, I just bring the camera. <laughs> Charles, you have fun in Maroon Bells, man. Happy Thanksgiving. That's awesome. And you're very welcome. <laughs> Uh, Dominic Nikon, do I suggest waterproof boots or trail runners? Well, it depends. I still like waterproof boots in the winter, but in three season weather, you know, anything above 30 degrees, I always say go trail runners. And the reason being is just they're more comfortable on your feet. Granted that you have your base weight down below, I'd say probably 25, 20 pounds, somewhere around there. But, you know, trail runners, they get wet and then they dry out. With waterproof boots, you sweat in them and it takes days for those to dry out. So, plus they're way more comfortable, the trail runners. And I don't know, I just like using them a lot more. So, trail runners, three season, boots, winter. Phil, definitely look into insoles. You might need some extra support. You know, condition, condition, condition as much as you can. Just as long as you're comfortable, exactly. Uh, let's see. Will you do any get-togethers south of you or in any different states? It's a possibility. Um, I promised a <laughs> meetup this year, and it just completely slipped my mind. You know, I was so focused on planning the Superior Hiking Trail that you know, I didn't even get to the meetup. We did one a couple years back. It was really successful. We had about, I want to say, 14 or 15 people that showed up. And it was a lot of fun meeting everybody and some of those people I regularly hike with. So it's really neat, but we shall see. We answered the question about the standing stone trail, I believe. Yes. Oh, hey, Nicholas. Yeah, we, we answered your question. So I will check in on that. It has been added to the list. Did I have a favorite section of the SHT, asked Eric. I'll tell you what, the I can't remember the section, but right before Beaver Bay, that was my, that was my favorite section, definitely. I mean, the whole trail was wonderful, except for the, <laughs> the section after Gooseberry Falls. That was not my favorite section at all. It was actually a really bad section with how muddy it was. But yeah, the, the section we did right before Beaver Bay, check the video. I know, I can't remember the campsites off the top of my head, but that was awesome. You had like four or five uh, overlooks and, and it was just, you had lakes. It was just everything that you could possibly imagine on a trail like that. Hey Tim, what's up, man? <laughs> Rain gear buddies for life. C. Griggs Siv. Hello, I have a large problem with the C knot or the knock pole, I guess I'm assuming the poles we need to chat uh, shoot me a message on the comments of this video I'm I'm interested they actually uh, I don't have it with me but uh, they actually sent they saw the video first of all for let me give a backstory so I got sent a pair of knock carbon fiber adjustable trekking poles really really liked them for the first 60 or so miles 100 miles whatever it ended up being and then I started to have problems with one of them. They saw the review video that I did and I told them, I was like, if I don't like the product, I'm gonna say that I don't like the product, just like all the other videos that I've made for reviews. And they just sent me one. They said, hey, we're gonna send you one. We'd really like to, you to send the other one back and we wanna take a look at it if it's a QA or a quality issue. Um, because they are sourced, they, they get their parts manufactured in China, like most people do, because it's cheap. And they just wanna be sure that you know, the quality checks are going through. So I did send it back. I'm waiting to hear from them. Oh, the, okay. So you ordered the water bag, which is the Vecto. It was supposed to be delivered on 1120. 
So from what I saw from the website and what uh, Gilad is telling me, which is the owner of that company, they have the pre-order until the day after Thanksgiving and then they're starting to ship. I just got the email today about the shipping notices because I believe they're sending me one. So I'm not sure where you saw that, but just know that they are starting to ship the day after Thanksgiving. And you can check their website, that's exactly what they say. So I'm curious, let me know how that goes. Um, I'm not sure if they're sending me one or not at this point. I don't, I don't know if I made him mad by giving a bad review. I'm hoping I didn't. But uh, yeah, let me know how that goes. He's really responsive to questions too, so I'm curious why he hasn't gotten back to you. Huh. Yeah, that's what my email says right here, so. Interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, keep trying on them, because like I said, I had no problems with, with their customer service. And, uh, you know, Darwin on the trail is another person that really likes their products. So, you know, they are in communication with us. Anyway, Zaleski is extremely muddy. Okay, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Dolly Sod's in the winter. I definitely want to go in the winter. I think that would be a really, really awesome trail to do. All right, Sarkhan, Sarkhan, Ister. What's my scariest bear encounter? Um, I actually have it in the video. Uh, you can't see the bear though, which is very unfortunate. I thought I got it on camera, but there was a um, second day in the Smokies. I had just gotten down from Klingman's Dome, crossed the road that goes up to Klingman's Dome. There was a bear just chilling right almost at the sign. He was sniffing some kind of log or bench or whatever that had been made. And watched him for a while. He went off, started to go further down the trail and I was talking to the camera and I just hear crash, 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 crash. And I, all these trees started going over. It was like, uh, it was like something out of uh, a movie. It was just, it was just crazy. Uh, I put up my trekking poles, <laughs> started yelling, hey bear, hey bear. And it was definitely saw the bear. It was charging me. Now I think I was just so frightened by it that I didn't get it on camera, but that was definitely a scary bear encounter for me. That and, uh, the, the snake that happened after that wasn't a bear encounter, but that was pretty scary too. Do I stay off trails during hunting season? No, I don't. Um, granted, I might not film during hunting season just because, you know, I'm either doing a trail that's I've already done, I've already have a video there. Like, like for instance, we went to Dolly Sods in hunting season, me and a friend, and you know, I didn't make a video because we already have two videos there. So I, no, I don't avoid the trail during hunting season. You just might not see a video because I already have a video there. Buckeye trail. Yeah. I, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, by the way. You ever decide to hike the buck dry trail? This segment's let me know. Yeah, that was supposed to be a part of that. If not all of it was supposed to be on the list. Maybe that was the loyal. I think that was the loyal sock trail. I'm getting my trails confused because I have so you should see this, I'll post it one day, but yeah, that is definitely on the list. We did a very, very small section of that, me and uh, Meerkat in our Marietta video in Ohio, but it was only like a mile, half a mile. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the trails that I'd really like to see. Thanks, dude. 71 Osa, thanks for the inspiration hike. I'm 60, duplicated your gear list and hiked solo the Western Trail in two days. Watching videos, I'm hooked on hiking. Yeah, the Westroom, that was a really, really nice trail. Hopefully you got, I can't remember where we stopped for food, but hopefully you got that huge burger that me and Gary got at the end of that video because that was really good and it's really close to that trail. All right, Ron asks, planning a through hike of the Laurel Highlands Trail, can you suggest some good planning sites? In all honesty, um, Watch a couple of my videos. There's several trip plans that I did. A very old trip plan on my first year of backpacking, I had a video on where it took me six days to do it, five nights. Did the full trail. I also have two four-day trips where I did the whole trail. But for the most part, all you really need to do to, to look at to plan that trip is on the DCNR website. So search Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail DCNR. You'll get a map, you'll get an elevation profile, 
you'll get a place where you can reserve your shelters in advance, which you need to do. Just keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the only trip area that I've even looked at. It was, it's a very easy trail to plan. Everything's numbered for you. The map is numbered for you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty spot on. Your Roche says we need an outdoor adventure syntax and sugar group hike. Man, that would be, yeah, Bradley, that would be epic. I would, I would love that. That would be really, really cool. What's up, Up Trail? How you doing, man? Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you cats gaming. What's your personal preference for cooking stove? Gas, alcohol, or small twig stove, aka wood stove? So during winter, now that it's becoming that time, I'm going to try a canister stove and see how that goes. I know some kind of some canisters have problems based on what fuel mixture you get. But I just want to try it and see if I like it better because I'm honestly kind of over carrying the whisper light since it is almost two pounds or whatever it ends up to be a pound and a half. And I know I don't want to use an alcohol stove just because you'll have, I like to boil water for bed. So I ended up boil, boiling a liter for bed, throw it in my foot box in the Nalgene bottle. So I want something fast that's not going to take a while. But in three season weather, my go-to stove is the Fancy Feast stove, which you've seen in probably all of my videos the past two years now. So, uh, and the reason I like that so much, it forces me to wait for the water to boil. Now it boils very fast, but it still forces me off my feet. It's slower than a canister stove, but it's faster than your normal alcohol stove. So that's what I like. All right, where the heck are we? <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks, Greg. See. Sorry, C. Griggs Siv? Okay, thank you. Uh, KJ for Unks, Pondo Sinatra. Well, that's quite a name. I started listening to the audiobook Ready Player One after you listened to it on one of your hikes. Great book. Thanks for recommending it. Man, I'll tell you what, they're actually coming out with a movie directed by Steven Spielberg. So I cannot wait. I think that drops in. Is that soon? No, it's got to be 2019, December or January 2019. I'm really looking forward to it. They have a couple of the trailers out. Be sure to watch them. Hopefully they stick to the book. But man, that book was awesome. I love it. Okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> okay. Triple Nickel Outdoors. I watched the abandoned Air Force Base vid that Syntax 77 put up. Saw you wrote about the Charisma Bobbleheads playthroughs of Meyer Larks. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> so for anyone that didn't get that joke, hopefully he did because I know he's a gamer and he's referenced this game before. But Fallout 3, I think Fallout 4 as well, you collected bobbleheads. And the from what I remember of the... I'm actually doing another playthrough right now. I, I really enjoy that game. It's one of my favorite video games to play. But Meyer Lurks and <laughs> Meyer Lurks are, are one of the enemies in Fallout 3. You would collect bobbleheads to increase your stats. So you'd have charisma, strength, intelligence, perception, all that stuff. So it was, they're really hard to find. But that place with the way he filmed it in the shadowy black and white, as he called it, it looked like there should have been a charisma bobblehead in there because that's kind of where it looks like it's in the Fallout 3 game. So that's what I was talking about. But hopefully someone got got that joke and hopefully he's not like what the hell is this guy talking about uh let's see one two three chris brewer why does that name sound familiar hey man great or uh, get or great channel you've been a huge motivator for me in more ways than hiking a quick question have you ever considered doing a podcast um not too big on podcasts but i know there's a couple uh, podcast that I regularly listen to, at least at least one. It's called Hang Your Own Hang. And maybe that's where I know you from. Maybe that's, I think that might be where I know you from. But uh, yeah, I would definitely do a podcast like that if that's what you're asking. So hit me up, um, Facebook, or just send me a direct message. Burning barrel at the end of the WRT. Yeah, that's what it's called. I hope you stayed there. 
or not stayed there. I hope you ate there. It was really, really good. <laughs> Right, I'm just trying to catch up on here. Yeah, hand warmers work really well. Pro tip, or actually when you, if you want to say noob tip, I'm going to say, make sure they're not expired. Um, <laughs> funny story, I bought a whole bunch on clearance uh, a couple years ago. And I was like, oh cool, I'm going to be all set for next year. Well, they expired. And I brought them out because I was going to warm my camera up to you know, save the batteries because they die in cold weather because they're lithium ion. And none of them worked. I had like 12 hand warmers with me, ready to go. I was gonna last all trip. None of them worked. So it was just all that extra weight that I had to pack out. So be sure that, uh, yeah, be sure that they're not expired whenever you use them. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the, um, the comments from the last video, questions, the people that can't make it. Uh, Trevor asks, this is a long question. So would I be willing to get Gary, who is one of my hiking buddies, on to talk about his Z-Pax Soulplex? Maybe a setup video and why he chose not to get a duplex. I know it's not me, excuse me. I know it's not you, but it would be helpful, helpful for us ground dwellers. On winter camping, how do you keep yourself from not sweating so much in the cold? Also, I'd like to know more about stoves in the winter. So we touched on the stoves part of that thing. I'm getting all tangled up from this thing. Hold on one second. Okay. So we touched on stoves in the winter. Uh, you gotta be careful with canister stoves. Um, you have to make sure you have the right mixture. You can use white gas, which is really good for deep winter camping. I'd say you know anything below 10 degrees here. And uh, you know as far as what stoves, I think we already pretty much went over that. Just be sure you look at your mixture. On winter camping, the way I keep myself from not sweating, and I do a lot of winter hiking, like. I try to go every two, every two weeks, I try to do that 20 mile loop at Raccoon. You know, with, uh, with if there's snow on the ground, I try to do a 12 mile loop, which is just half of that, uh, you know, around the lake, which I've, I've filmed multiple videos at Raccoon, so check that out. But if I'm, if I'm sensing that I'm sweating, I bite the barrel and I try to take off as much of my layers as I can. So you wanna, air out those layers. You want to let the wind blow and dry out that stuff. And then whenever you feel like you're dry, then you can put your clothes back on. If you sense that you're overexerting yourself, take a break. You know, don't wear too many layers. You know, take off layers as you hike and just try to be as comfortable as you can. The big thing is make sure that you're not overexerting yourself, which is huge. Uh, if you want additional information on that, be sure to watch a couple of Les Stroud, Survivor Man's winter videos. He has a ton of information on the do's and don'ts of winter survival, camping, hiking, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the part about Gary and his Soulplex, I would definitely, I will definitely ask him if he can talk about a video, maybe come over for a beer sometime. Problem is it's getting cold now, so, and I know he doesn't live, excuse me, <laughs> I know he lives in an apartment, so it's gonna be hard for him to set his stuff up. He's gonna have to come here and do it. Maybe we can do it in the basement of my house, but I will definitely ask him. He's a really big lazy bum, so I'm not sure if he's gonna agree to any of that, but I will try to get that for you. However, if you wait a couple years, maybe just a year, I'm hoping to do this, not next year, but the year after. My dad has mentioned to me that he wants to hike the Grand Canyon. So I'm looking for some, maybe a 30 mile, down and back or a loop or something in the Grand Canyon. And for that, I'm gonna need a tent. I'm probably and more than likely going to purchase the Z-Pax Soulplex as a tent. So if he's too much of a lazy bum and he doesn't wanna do it, I will definitely have that video for you when I hike the Grand Canyon. Now it just depends if you can wait that long. So I really like that tent though. Um, as far as going with the duplex, you know, it's extra weight, it's a, it's a little bit extra money, but I think the Soulplex has plenty of room you can even bring your pack in with you, so. Uh, Gone Commando, do you recommend hiking poles for the beginner? And if so, what kind? Um, I did a video, a beginner backpacking video about trekking poles. I definitely recommend them. I think, you know, if you even if you just go to Walmart and buy their, 
I forget what they're called. I guarantee someone will chime in. Maybe outdoor products or outdoor gear. I forget that their their brand name, but their uh, trekking poles. I think they're twenty bucks. They're collapsible. They're adjustable. They're perfectly fine. You know, even something like that will do you fine. And then as you get more knowledge on what you like, you could choose cork. You could choose foam. You could choose rubber. It just depends on your personal style. Me, I really like the EVA foam trekking poles, and I like a combination of carbon fiber and adjustability. So that's what I'm currently looking for. I really like the Leckies that I got, but you know, I really miss that, that Z pole. So they're, they come in three separate shafts and they kind of just fold up. But hopefully that answers your question. Uh, First Sergeant Fluffy, and this is another one of those comments that we got earlier. Can you do more sectional hikes in the Great Smoky Mountains? Maybe start from Cherokee, North Carolina area of the park and do a large loop. My goal for that area, since I love that place so much, is I am planning over the next couple years to try and do the majority of the trails there. So, yes, it will definitely happen. It might just take a couple years to do. Uh, Todd wants to know, (laughs) when will we get more videos of you and your sweet-looking girlfriend? Well, Todd, that's probably never going to happen. We actually broke up a little over a year ago. We had that one video up at Morrison, or no, Minister Creek, and that's probably all you're going to see. Who knows, maybe maybe I'll find another hiker girl, but she didn't really like hiking, so (laughs) that's kind of my thing too. I, even if I would find a girlfriend that really, really is, you know, enjoys hiking, I kind of want that to be my thing. You know, it's just a, okay, I'm leaving, see ya kind of stuff. All right, anyway, that is all the questions from the comments of the last video. We're getting close to that hour mark here, so try to get through these questions here. Uh, Andy Schill, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Your 35 mile Oil Creek day hike was inspiring. Thank you very much. I was pretty amazed that I actually completed it. Um, Funny story, the day after, (laughs) I could barely walk. My, uh, My left foot just was so mad at me after that. My right foot was totally fine. My left foot hated me though. But if I had to do it again, I would definitely do it in a heartbeat. (laughs) Yeah, definitely the Fallout games. And if you haven't played Fallout, I'll tell you what, do play Fallout 3. I'm not a big fan of uh, New Vegas or 4, but man, Fallout 3 is one of my all time favorite video games. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Bradley. Go with the Mavic Pro Platinum has different blades and the motors are different and it's a lot quieter. Okay, that's good to know. Check out Ready, Set, Drone. I will check that out. Thank you very much, Dustin. Yeah, definitely you can boil uh, hot water in an Nalgene. It acts like a little space heater. It's really, really nice. You just can make sure that cap's on and it's not frozen or else you'll have a trip like Trail Killer had on Syntax's video where it actually soaked his whole sleeping bag. It started just coming out of the the cap because the cap was frozen. So be very careful about that if you're gonna do that. (laughs) Uh, Okay, how do you start Triple Nickel Outdoors? How do you start building your subscriber base? Any tips? Um, That's a really good question. And I honestly think it just takes time. If you're starting a hiking YouTube channel. I mean, there's so many of them out there these days. You just have to be very, like, in my opinion, okay, this is just me. Other people might like it differently. You have to be, you have to show your personality, I think, a little bit. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't put on a show for people. Don't act differently than you do in real life. Um, If people hate you, they hate you. I know some people hate me. I really don't give a flying crap about it, but the majority of the people on this channel have been very inspiring to me and you know we get people like you guys in this chat that are just you know saying thank you and they're wishing me happy thanksgiving and i'd like to think that you know after reading you know i recognize you guys from the comments that i respond to on a daily basis and i feel like i know some of you you know so you want to be yourself on camera you want to film as much as you can and then you need to work on your editing skills i think a lot of people watch stuff that people really didn't spend a lot of time in their editing process. You know, I spent 
I spent probably two or three days straight just looking at the screen, watching and rewatching, and I still miss stuff. I try to take out all the uhs. I try to take out all the ums, you know, but I miss them every now and then. Go places where people know, Dolly Sods, Red River Gorge, um, White Mountains, you know, Maroon Bells. Go to all those places, establish your base for people to look at very popular areas and go from there. But it'll come, it just takes time. Okay, where the heck did we go now? Oh no. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we saw this. I saw the Mavic Pro. Where is, okay, here we go. Did I answer this? No. Okay. 36 mile day hike inspired me, planning on doing a 24 hour hike, although I think I will only cover, wow, 24 hours, restless. Hey, if you need company for that, let me know. Uh, that's actually a, a uh, through hiking challenge is to do the, the 24 hour challenge. So that's, uh, good luck with that, man. That's crazy. And be awesome, restless one. I watched your last video, absolutely loved it. Definitely enjoyed your videos. Are you planning anything out west? Yes, Grand Canyon, hopefully next year, probably the year after that. Um, I would love to go to the Maroon Bells. I better start training for that soon if I'm gonna do that. But if I'm gonna go out west, I definitely wanna go with someone else. Um, it just makes it more special, you know? Raccoon Creek is only an hour away from me. Never been there because I've heard mixed reviews. It's pretty good, Bryce. The campsites are kinda meh. But it's, it's pretty good, especially for beginner people. I mean, I consider that my stomping grounds. I'm up there all the time. <laughs> Milk steak flyer. Yo, man, love the videos. Being from Philly, you are the first Penguins fan I like. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Um, I won't bust your butt about 1975, so we'll keep it going. You're my favorite Flyers fan. How about that? <laughs> uh, what have I heard about the chameleon? Um, you know what? I A lot of people got sent the chameleon to try out. I think it got a lot of hype. It's a great hammock. I think it beats the crap out of you know, an Eagle's Nest Outfitter hammock any day. And it's still modular. You know, you can take the bug net off. You can add pockets. You can add a peak storage bag. You can add tie outs here and there. However, I don't need all that. So I would honestly start cutting things off of that hammock if I were to purchase one of those, just to kind of lower the weight and get rid of the features I don't need. If you want to be modular, I think the chameleon is the way to go. I think it's overthrown and Eno is supposedly one of the most popular hammocks out there. Now they only got popular because they were one of the first people to advertise, you know, in retail stores about their products. But, you know, Dutch is an up and coming. I think we're going to see him in retail stores one day. But I believe he just came out with another hammock with a bug net. And my big thing with the chameleon is, yeah, you can remove the bug net or on any other hammock, you can kind of just tie it off to the side. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit extra weight, but you can use it all the time, just like the chameleon. So check on, um, oh, who has it? SB Outdoors. Uh, Spagiver, they all have reviews on that. I'm, I'm definitely not the person to ask having never owned the chameleon. So I don't want to give you false information. Bryce asks, do I ever worry about buying non-freestanding tents and having to pitch in rocky terrain? Um, that's a general concern if I was to buy, you know, say the Z-Pack, Z-Packs, yeah, Z-Pack Solplex. However, they did just recently come out with a pull version for it. So for an extra, I don't want to give the wrong thing. Some might over quote this, I mean, hundred bucks. You actually get the carbon fiber poles with that tent to make it freestanding. But for the most part, I really haven't had issues. I mean, in rocky terrain, you can just put a rock on top of it, of your tent stake and hold it down, you know, double it up over the rock, tie it to a tree. There's things that you can do to, you know, avoid not being able to get a tent stake in the ground. So, <laughs> uh, okay, no problem, Daniel, my pleasure. What are the pros and cons with free balling on the trail? <laughs> I knew this was gonna come up at some point. Uh, backstory for this, 
I got so ticked off at the chafing going on in my boxers on the Superior High Control after the fourth day, fifth day, I just said screw it and just rocked the shorts, no underwear. It was fantastic. I think the only downside of not wearing boxers or underwear with your shorts or you know your pants is I think I have an increased worry about ticks crawling up my leg and getting up there because I don't really use a lot of bug spray. Hardly use any actually. Um, and I use permethrin on my clothes, but you know they can walk right up there and bite things that you're not going to want bitten. So that that's the only con. The pros are I dried out incredibly fast. I didn't have any moisture issues, chafing issues, um, smelly issues, nothing like that. I just I think I'm gonna rock it. I'm probably gonna look into a pair of shorts with a liner in it. So I'll probably do that. If you want to hike the knobstone trail, mess with me on Facebook and we could set something up. We'll do. I need to research that once too though. Alright, Chris Brewer, thanks for answering. One more question, only if you have time, any tips on hooking up with hikers with similar goals? Um, channels like this, um, hammockforums.com, .net, sorry, .net, yeah. Uh, Reddit, there's always some kind of meetups going on. You just have to, you just gotta search for them. Uh, REI always has some groups if, you have a, if you're lucky enough to have an REI near you. They always have group hikes and that's a great way to meet people. I don't necessarily like group hikes, but it is a great way to meet people. <laughs> Thanks, Sean, I still like that. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say it like that, but it came out perfect. Let's see, what is the most memorable hiking trail you've been on? By far, as of now, the Superior Hiking Trail. Hopefully the AT in the future. I'll check it out, Bradley. Well, I will, I'll search for it. Uh, let's see, go to Panther, Devil's Panther, go ahead up Devil's Path next year. How many head dives have you taken on trail? Oh my God, Todd, a ton. I can't, I mean, sometimes I'm lucky enough to even get it on camera, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, not so much heads dives, it's just me falling on my butt, but yeah. All right, two tree outdoors, the shirt is nice, maybe I missed it, but who makes the shirt? Uh, we did a... Teespring campaign for this and I've had a couple of people ask if I could you know re-release the campaign so what I noticed is Shug has a store set up on Teespring so I looked into it and I can set up a store we actually were popular enough to do that and I need to order another one because I just screwed this shirt up right here because it melted in the laundry I left it on a belt buckle I don't know why it was in the laundry but or the dryer I mean so I do want to order some more shirts and coffee mugs, but I'm going to set up a store probably right around Christmas time or maybe January. We'll have to see. I just got to find time to do it. So teespring.com, I will announce it, so just keep checking the channel. I might just put it in the links up at the top on the channel bar. Okay, meetup.com, I'll have to check that out. Uh, Arcana. Don't you have to tie down a blackbird to get the shelf and foot box? Yes, you do, but you can use your existing. So what I do is, I, you know, I obviously have a tarp above me. So stakes here, stakes here. On those two head stakes, the foot box and the, not the foot box, the shelf and the head area tied down to. You don't need the, anything for the foot box. Your feet just kind of stick in it. So we're not bringing, what I'm saying is we're not bringing two additional stakes for that. From what I see, the chameleon hammock is nice, and yes, it is modular, but I prefer the, the DD hammock system instead of a lot. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. Solar winter trips can be boring. I thought about going this weekend to the Porkies. They have two feet of snow. Yeah, that's the thing for me. I really like, you know, being, this is the, this is the one time of the year that I actually enjoy company when I'm hiking because, man, it gets dark at like 4.45. So from 4.45 to 9 p.m. minimum, you know, you're just sitting in the dark by yourself collecting firewood. So you can always listen to an audio book, but you know, three season weather, I'm all for solo backpacking. Winter, it's nice to have someone to 
moan and groan about that. It, oh man, it's cold out here. You know, it's just, it's more fun. Since you're talking about hammocks, little shop of hammocks, warrior, they don't get mentioned enough. I'll have to check them out. I never heard of them. Did you ever feel dizzy sleeping in your hammock? Because I do. Any tips? Happy Thanksgiving. The only time that I was dizzy in the hammock was when I drank too much fireball at Zaleski on night one. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's, that's interesting. I've never experienced that before. That's, I wonder if anybody else has. Dill's Prath is brutal. Did it over the summer in two separate overnights. They never heard of a switch back in the Catskills. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You want to have your feet just a little higher so you're not you know, soaking down, but you don't want to be, you don't want to have all the blood rush to your head. You don't want to be up that high. Top three microbreweries. You would take a buzzy buddy visiting Pittsburgh the first time. Um, honestly, just take them to Fatheads down on the south side. They have a ton of stuff on tap, and it's one of the uh, only bars that I really, really enjoy going to. I'm not a big IPA drinker, which seems to be the, the, you know, the, the normal thing that people brew all the time. I'm more of a, a wheat, uh, you know, a Belgian-style beer so that I like. You know, sometimes I'll drink this crap that I just had laying around in my fridge. But, but um, yeah, take them to Fatheads down on Southside on, on Carson Street. Yeah, we thought about doing a meetup. We've done one in the past. I will try to do one this spring, though. I noticed the half stack in one of your videos. Imagine you play. That's a guitar amp, by the way. Imagine you play, and I wonder if you have taken a Martin backpacking guitar. Nah, never did anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I used to play a lot. I was in a band. We all have matching tattoos. That's where this came from. But yeah, I haven't taken a, like a travel guitar or anything and I barely ever play that thing. It just kind of sits there for nostalgic purposes. Woodsman, what's up brother? Hey, thank you again for the S or the, um, what was it? The STS. That, this is the guy, Woodsman was the guy that gave us the trail magic in that video. So Woodsman, you are the man still. I will come up your way again. We're going to do the, uh, I think it's Loyal Sock that's up there. At some point, I'm going to do that. <laughs> but thanks again, bro. That was awesome. <laughs> that's cool that he showed up. All right. I need to hurry up because we are over the time limit now, but I don't want to leave anyone down here without answering their question. Uh, what tent? Me and my, my wife and I are new to hiking. What two-person tent would you recommend? Um, I really like the Quarter Dome 2 from REI. If you want to be, if you want to have the, the perfect match between weight, uh, price, um, space, and durability. On the high end, I would recommend the z Packs Duplex or Triplex maybe for some extra room. It's expensive though. It's like 600 bucks, maybe even more. Also, look into tarp tent. I just heard that they are redesigning some of their tents, so some of those tents might be really good pretty soon here with some good pricing on it. So keep that in mind, tarptent.com. Okay, I'll check that out, Mike. There's talk about a hike in ANF the weekend of 12-8, 12-10. Okay, let me know about that, Arcana. Message me on Facebook. Um. Todd, I'm not a big football fan at all. I just, I can't get into it. It's just too slow for me. I know I'm probably going to get flamed all hell and back for saying that, but you know, I'm, a, I'm a hockey fan. I like, my ADD just requires me to go back and forth, back and forth, always tries to hold my attention, and football just does not do that. Uh, believe me, I'll watch it. I'll root for them. I'll cheer for the Steelers. I'll go to people's houses and watch the game, but I'm more for the atmosphere than the actual game. Uh, favorite thing you use when going camping or hiking? My hammock. It's got to be my hammock still. All right, brother. Get, have, have fun. Happy Thanksgiving up trail. Church Brew Works is good too, though the past two times I've been there, the first time they're, what is it, the, the beer dispenser broke or something, and then the second time I went back, the kitchen had burned down or was, was broken. or so We couldn't get food and we couldn't get beer. 
So I've never actually eaten there fully, so yeah. Yeah. If you take a tar moisture condensation, we probably make sure the wood is coated. So yeah, definitely. Hey, Frozen, love the video. Check out my channel. Check out Hillbilly Hikes. We'll check you out, bro. Take on any high miles trips. Okay. All right. We're a little over the time limit here, but I did answer any, I did answer all the questions. So anybody I missed, just respond to this video when it goes live. It should go live in a, probably an hour or two. And I will try to get back to your questions. We'll try to do another one of these in a couple months here. Uh, Bradley, I will. I'll probably make an announcement video for something like that. Uh, Connor, my preferred method of camping. Hike all day, camp before dark, sleep in a hammock. So guys, I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. That was an awesome, awesome time I had. Great questions. Keep them coming. We'll try to do more of this. I am terrible at a harmonica. You don't want to hear that on the video. Trust me. <laughs> and uh, we'll definitely do this again sometime. I'm looking forward to some winter backpacking. Oh yeah, before I go, if anybody has any suggestions in the Pittsburgh, Ohio region, you know, somewhere close to me, West Virginia, that is an easy winter overnight backpacking trip, Please let me know in the comments below because that's I'm more than likely going to have to start slow here. I'm a noob when it comes to winter backpacking and I definitely want to go on some easy trips before I get into actually backpacking something. So, uh, Systems administration, Sean. So server work. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot. Have a good one. And by the way, I'm an uncle. I just want to say congratulations to my sister. Baby boy, 7 pounds, 10 ounces. Crazy. So, guys, thanks, guys. I'm out.